Good afternoon. Thank you for attending our webinar today. Hobos Pipe USA has been manufacturing fiberglass pipes at our Houston location since 1987. I'm sure many of you are familiar with our centrifugally cast pipes. What we want to introduce to you today is our new non-circular pipe technology. But before we dive into the new non-circular production line, I want to give you a little background on the company and the current product line for those of you who may not be as familiar. Hobas has been providing pipes to the U.S. market for over 35 years, but globally they've been around for even longer. Hobas CC pipes were first manufactured in the 1950s. It's an interesting story actually how the technology advancement came about. The pipes were actually invented when a textile manufacturer was seeking a replacement for the traditional wooden rollers that they were using in their production of fabrics. Their goal was to produce a cylinder with a smooth outer surface made from glass fiber reinforced polyester resin. Thus, the idea of manufacturing cylinders by centrifugal casting was born. These cylinders soon became used as pipes and were installed in Europe. One of the first projects was a hydropower line about two miles in length. Not only is this pipeline still in operation, but hydropower lines are still a key market for us today. Here's a picture of a penstock project installed in Newfoundland last year. The installations in the U.S. began in 1984. By the end of 1986, 50,000 feet had already been installed in the USA. Due to the high demand for our corrosion resistant products, the manufacturing plant in Houston, Texas was built in 1987. The market need was obviously there because to date we have over 10 million feet of pipe installed in cities across the U.S. and North America. Non-circular pipe ties into our extensive experience with circular fiberglass pipe. Here is a more recent picture of our factory in Houston, which has more than quadrupled in size since the original facility was built. The non-circular manufacturing, which already existed in Europe, will now be coming to the USA. We're excited to add this new technology to our existing product line. The new 30,000 square foot building will house the state-of-the-art technology to build the non-circular pipe. The product line will enable us to serve our existing customers with a better, more practical solution when dealing with the rehabilitation of non-circular sewers. Now I'd like to turn the presentation over to Gabriel, who will give you some more specifics about the non-circular application. Thanks, Kim. Non-circular sewers were developed to efficiently handle various volumes of flow. In the late 19th century, earlier 20th century, combined sewer systems were popularized around the world. A combined sewer system would collect rainwater runoff, domestic sewage, and industrial wastewater into one pipe. Under normal conditions, it transports all the wastewater it collects to a sewage treatment plant for treatment, then discharges this to a body of water. The narrow bottoms in NC sewers enable self-cleaning by having a minimum flow velocity for dry weather conditions and a much larger area in case of storm conditions. Most of these sewers are now over 100 years old and well past their original lifespan. So what differentiates Hobos NC from other products? In a business 101 graph with a structural solution axis and a bypass cost axis, geopolymer or gunniting, as well as most spray products are going to fall on this side of the spectrum. They require not only full bypass of the line, but also repairs of any infiltration into the existing host. Even then, their life is based on the life of concrete. CIPP is made of similar materials as our pipe, and for sure, it is able to be designed as a full structural solution. However, it is highly dependent on the curing process in an uncontrolled environment. Similar to geopolymer, albeit not as restrictive, it needs to have a dry sewer for installation. Hobos NC can be found in this particular corner. We use similar materials as CIPP, however, we can control the curing process in a very careful, controlled environment. We were able to achieve full structural capacity even before the pipes are loaded in a truck. Furthermore, we have the ability to be installed in a live sewer. This minimizes disruptions, installation time, and most importantly, cost. The technology that we will use to manufacture these pipes in Houston was actually created by our parent company in Europe called AmiBlue. AmiBlue has over 50 years of experience manufacturing fiberglass pipes. 
Army Blues factory in Poland has been responsible for providing non-circular pipes not only to all of Europe, but also to the Americas and other regions of the world. Our factory in Houston, the same that manufactures centrifugally cast pipe, will have the capability of manufacturing all common non-circular shapes, including egg, arch, and mouth. The size ranges will be as small as 18 inches to as large as 13 feet. Pipe will come in section lengths of 8 feet to 10 feet. Expanding on the benefits of this product line, they're very similar to what you would expect from circular Hobos pipes. A long expected service life proven by strain corrosion testing, a full structural solution, and raw materials that are inherently resistant to sulfuric acid, and as we previously mentioned, it can be installed in live flow. Of course, the biggest benefit is the ability to increase flow capacity in non-circular sewers due to the smoothness factor of our pipe and our ability to match the shape of the existing sewer as closely as possible. This feature is enhanced in, lar in larger sewers where we are able to see an even larger increase in hydraulic capacity since the area difference between the host and our pipe as a percentage is actually much smaller. This product will provide a great benefit to a range of applications within gravity sewers. This is going to include sanitary sewers and storm sewers or culverts. Other applications with minimal internal pressure may also be applicable. As far as installation, 90% of installations will be through slip lining, rehabbing existing deteriorated lines. The remaining 10% of the installations are going to be direct bury which are typically new culverts, extensions of existing non circular channels, and likely as a possible solution for low clearance issues. The engineering design really begins with a deep evaluation of the existing host to determine the maximum dimensions of the pipe that will fit inside the sewer. Not only are the minimum internal dimensions of the host taken into consideration, but also any PIs, curves, and offset joints, and any possible obstruction that may limit the passage of the pipe. After having the maximum dimensions taken into account the minimum annular space for grouting, we can determine the internal dimensions of the Hobos NC pipe. This pipe is one continuous structural section with a smooth tangential transitions for each radial curve. Ideally, we want to limit the flattest sections of the curves as well as the tight curves. A minimum radius of no less than six inches is used and the flattest section should not be larger than three times the maximum dimension, width or height of the shape. After determining the shape of the pipe, the thickness for most projects is determined using finite element analysis, or FEA. This is the best method to evaluate every shape we can produce in our non-circular machine. Other methods include the WRC Sewerage Rehabilitation Manual, which is a British standard commonly used in Canada. The French 3R 2014 and the German ATVM 127-2 are other European design standards for NC fiberglass pipes. While all of these three European standards can address some shapes, it is impossible for them to address every shape and size. Because of that, we find that the FEA is the most prudent and consistent approach. We have also seen references to ASTM F1216 in some projects. However, it is important to remember that this standard is not applicable to non-circular fiberglass pipes. With the FEA, we really start out with calculating the loads. We will follow the same conservative approach we use in the design of centrifugally cast pipes. That is, we will take the deepest cover, assume groundwater up to the highest grade, and apply the corresponding live loads. In a few cases with very shallow cover, it is possible that the worst loading conditions will actually be the shallowest cover due to the higher influence of the live loads. All of this is analyzed on a case-by-case -case basis. Like our centrifugally cast pipes, non-circular pipes are also flexible pipes. 
pipe's ability to support load is greatly increased by several factors when the pipe is properly installed and supported by the adjacent soil. So understanding the surrounding soils or being able to make proper assumptions of the same is an important part of the design process. Probably the most important pipe's property in the design of the fiberglass pipe is the pipe's hoop flexural modules. Derived from testing, this property help us predict the response of the pipe when exposed to the service loads. For all FEA calculations, we want to make sure that a factor of safety of one and a half and a max deformation of less than 3% long-term is achieved. This will ensure the long life of the pipe when installed correctly and the surrounding soil remains undisturbed. The manufacturing process is best described as a computer-controlled filament winding on a steel mold. This process enables us to provide unmatched, consistent manufacturing process with tight joint tolerances from pipe number one to pipe number 1000. The manufacturing of the pipe starts by adding a fiberglass resin ring on the pipe mold. This ring has two primary objectives. One, to set the desired length for the particular pipe section, and two, to create a mold for the bell, which is built as an integral part of the pipe. After this, we add a plastic film to the entire mold, which will help us remove the pipe from the mold. Then we're able to start the winding process, starting with the first layer, the liner of the pipe. Following the liner, we create the structure of the pipe by winding successive layers of resin, fiberglass, and fine aggregate material. There is a variety of fiberglass that we use in the manufacturing process. They are continuous, chopped, and matte that provide the strength in all directions from hoop to axial. A variety of resins can also be used depending on the chemicals and the temperature of the pipe will be exposed to. The last layer of the pipe, the outer surface, is made mostly of sand, which will help us protect the pipe and provide a rough surface to create better bonding with the grout. After the pipe has cured, on the opposite side of the FRP ring that created the bell, the spigot is created by a grinding machine with very tight tolerances, after which the pipe is ready to be removed from the pipe mold and the remaining plastic film sections are removed from the inside. Finally, the pipe's ends are trimmed and checked by QAQC. The joint is composed of a low-profile bell, which was created by the FRP ring we mentioned in our previous slide, and a spigot. The spigot is composed of two recessed sections, one of which is a gasket groove, which holds the EPDM gasket. When the pipes are assembled, this gasket is compressed with a tight, zero leakage seal inside and out. This connection has been tested per ASTM D4161 at 30 PSI of internal pressure. Installation is simple compared to other rehab products. Since no bypass is needed, the service to the local community is minimized. First, a shaft is created. The size, shape will vary depending on the depth, soils, and even location. After creating the shaft, contractors will gain access by removing the top half of the sewer line. At this point, the line is cleaned thoroughly and the internal dimensions are confirmed by dragging a steel mandrel back and forth throughout the sewer line. The outer dimensions of this mandrel are typically slightly larger than the largest outside dimensions of our fiberglass pipe. The post is thoroughly cleaned, the pipes can be inserted, bells trailing. The newly dropped pipe is assembled to the previous pipe and a push ring can be inserted inside the bell. This ring helps provide a uniform load to the pipe wall while preventing the application of force to the bell itself. In this case, the push ring was actually being pulled from the adjacent manhole downstream. Following pipe insertion, laterals will be reinstated. This can be done in a variety of ways using insertities, flow-through plugs, top hat CIPP, and other methods. It all depends on the level of rehab of the lateral line and the type of seal that is desired. Finally, grouting of the annular space can take place. This is typically done by creating seals with concrete bulkheads on the downstream and upstream rehab limits, then diverting all the flow to the inside of our pipe and injecting grout from the downstream end until you get grout at the highest vent on the upstream end. While grouting on the annular space is not designed to sustain any loads, it is needed to pass all dead loads and live loads in a uniform fashion to the whole bus pipe. 
In order to support our customers, Hobos has a premier field service team that can provide advice and help in the installation of our product. Our field service team has over 100 years of experience and can share their vast knowledge on best practices and avoiding specific pitfalls. Our first project with our new line is for the Central Wastewater Treatment Plant in Dallas, Texas. A few miles from downtown, this plant is responsible for treating the majority of the city's sewage. The plant has two large interceptors arriving at the White Rock pump station. In 2018, these two lines carried an estimated average combined flow of over 103 million gallons per day. The first line flows east to west is the White Rock interceptor. The sewer has a mix of both round and non-circular shapes. The second line, which flows from north to south, is an 84-inch horseshoe installed in 1950. The second line will be cleaned as part of this project. Due to the severity of the existing condition, it was determined that the White Rock Interceptor would need to be rehabbed. The existing arch shape consists of around 1,700 linear feet with dimensions of 84 by 89 inches, a rectangular bottom half, and a 42 inch radius top half. The remaining 400 linear feet will be rehabbed with Hobas round pipe. For the non-circular section, the existing host will be slip lined with Hobas NC fiberglass pipe. Hobas NC was chosen for this project as the most cost-effective solution for this particular project. The shape 75 inch by 78 inch will recover all the hydraulic capacity of the existing line while adding a long structural life to the critical sewer. We anticipate we will begin production in the summer fall of this year. I will now turn it over to Kim to discuss testing. Thank you, Gabe. Circular pipes are tested in accordance with the various ASTM and AWWA standards, depending on the application. ASTM D3262, for example, is the standard by which round fiberglass sewer pipes are made. Although this standard does not currently address non-round products, many of the test methods can still be used. The test depicted here is a parallel plate test for determining pipe stiffness. For non-round products, this standard stiffness test is not easily analyzed to determine pipe stiffness. Each different shape will have varied results even for the same material composition. To sufficiently analyze the pipe composition and determine the appropriate design values to feed to the FEA, we need to take coupons of the pipe. They are removed generally from the flattest area of the non-circular shape. These coupons can then be tested per the ASTM standards referenced for circular shapes. For example, this hoop flexural test is done per ASTM D790, which is the test for flexural properties. Other tests include ASTM D695, which is the test for compressive properties, and ASTM D638, the test method for determining tensile properties. The design life for non-circular pipes can be predicted by the same methods that are used for round pipe. In order to test the specimens in accordance with ASTM D3681, also known as strain corrosion, round pipes can be manufactured with the same material composition as the non-circular shapes. The strain corrosion test consists of exposing a minimum of 18 specimens to a highly corrosive solution, typically one normal sulfuric acid, and deflecting to various strain levels. The time to failure for each of these specimens is recorded and regression analysis is performed to predict the life. Fiberglass pipes, round or non-circular, are highly corrosion resistant and provide a 100-year design life. We hope that you've enjoyed this presentation today. Hobus Pipe USA would like to thank you for your attendance to our webinar. We are excited to see how our new non-circular product line can help you make the best of your infrastructure dollars.